and I know that he personally understands uh, the importance of this issue, particularly the Ahmadi Muslims who have uh, fled persecution in their own countries in Pakistan uh, and who would face horrendous persecution again if they were to go back there. So can the Noble Lord, the Minister, give us a bit more detail in terms of how we are able to support the Sri Lankan government in terms of immediate shelter for uh, the refugees? Uh, will this country be playing its part in terms of any resettlement programme? And finally, in terms of the discussion the Security Minister had, uh, will we be su supporting the Sri Lankan government in terms of trying to sustain a proper reconciliation process in the aftermath of that terrible tragedy? My Lord, first of all, on the final point the Noble Lord raises, the short answer is absolutely my uh, right on my friend, Security Minister, made that offer to the Sri Lankan government. I myself visited the High Commission to sign the condolence book and had quite an extensive meeting with the High Commissioner, where I will be seeking to visit myself directly for the very purpose that the Noble Lord underlines. They look towards the United Kingdom, and I'm proud, as I'm sure all Noble Lords are, to be part of a country, notwithstanding our challenges, which has shown that we have not only have the respect of all faiths and none, but faith communities are an integral part to finding many of the solutions to the challenges we face. He is quite right to point out the issue of the situation of the Muslim communities that were expelled and under uh, severe uh, security concerns. And he's quite right, and I declare an interest, I suppose, in this respect, that the majority of those Muslims are Amdi Muslims. The irony, I'm sure, is not lost on many people. Those who fled Pakistan because they were targeted for not being Muslim, are now being targeted for being Muslim in another country. And I assure you that we have made all necessary offers to the Sri Lankan government uh, to extension of support. There's been no specific request as yet. On the issue of relocation, the UN and civil society organisations are working with the government to identify immediate relocation options. And there are 412 refugees, as I said. Uh, to the Noble Lord that are currently in the resettlement process of the UNHCR. Of the number he asked specifically for the UK, the UN say that seven are currently pr being processed for relocation to the United Kingdom. My Lords, may I thank the Minister for repeating this particular question here. The world looked in horror when we heard about the massacre of over 250 people, worshippers and tourists in Sri Lanka on that fateful Easter day. We all condemn such attacks, and it's right that Sri Lanka takes every legal measure to identify and prosecute the perpetrators and take steps to prevent further attacks. My Lords, may I single out the timely meeting of the All Faiths Group that was held in the speakers, Lord Speaker's premises upstairs as its number of people paid tribute to what had happened in Sri Lanka on that day. There are two questions arise. One, I was delighted that the Minister mentioned that there are measures being taken to protect the Afghanis, Pakistanis and Ahmadiyya community in Sri Lanka. Who actually is monitoring that and has the United Nations any particular role in terms of ensuring the safety and security of this particular community? And the second question is in relation to the Ahmadiyya community in this country. There is a very large Sri Lankan diaspora in the United Kingdom, which we noticed in the past. What is being done to assure the Ahmadiyya community in this country, the peace-loving Ahmadiyya community in this country, about the protection of their friends and relations in Sri Lanka? My Lords, firstly, I join with the Noble Lords. I'm sure I speak with all Noble Lords. That we were all appalled by the events that took place in Colombo. Worshippers and people who were enjoying a holiday being attacked. And it again shows the importance of unity to actually stand up to those extremists and terrorists who seek to divide us. We've experienced it here in the United Kingdom, and it's a tragic nature that this is a wor worldwide scourge which we need to uh, unify against. On the specific questions that the Noble Lord has raised, we continue to work very closely with both the diaspora communities here in the UK as well as the Muslim community, the Amdi Muslim community, the Noble Lord will know that I am a member myself of the community. I've been working very closely in identifying the concerns. The situation for those refugees is very dire at the moment. Indeed, they're taking refuge in a police station, a centre and a Amdi Muslim mosque in Colombo. I've raised these questions directly with the High Commissioner and she has assured me of her cooperation. And a poignant m moment, if I may, again, he talked of multi-faith organisations. On Sunday, I attended such an occasion 
in a church near to me in Putney, where the High Commissioner was present, the Deputy Lieutenant was present, and it was very poignant to hear readings from Christian communities, but also representatives of the Amdi Muslim community who reflected on the need for standing up for those who seek to divide us and prayers for those who have passed under these attacks. Congratulate the Noble Lord, the Minister, for the role that he played in helping to secure the release of Asya Bibi and her ability to travel to be reunited yesterday with her family in Canada. The persecution of that Christian woman and the Ahmadi community in Pakistan is something that should motivate us all in promoting freedom of religion or belief, and particularly Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Can I take him to two written questions I tabled yesterday, which I gave him copies of? One involved the police stations where Ahmadis and Christians have been taking refuge in Sri Lanka, and where, as the Noble Lord has said, they're even denied basic uh, foods, humanitarian aid and assistance. And could he t- tell us precisely what discussions we've had with, UNES- with, with, with UNHCR in uh, making progress to help those groups? What the real result is not having a thousand Asia Bibi cases. We must work with countries such as Pakistan to ensure, first and foremost, the long-term objective must be the overturning of these draconian blasphemy laws, which are used not just against minority communities in Pakistan, but against the Muslim communities themselves. And therefore, I assure you that we are working very closely with the Pakistani government to ensure we can build not just religious tolerance, but understanding at a core level. Uh, He mentions about UNHCR. We are engaged fully with the Sri Lankan authorities and UN agencies on the ground to see what level of support we can offer. There has been no specific request, apart from the figures I quoted back to the Noble Lord Collins in terms of specific refugees who may come to the United Kingdom. On the wider issue of textbooks, the Noble Lord and I have discussed this matter. I agree with him, and I think we have a massive aid program to various parts of the world, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and it's important that in any support we provide, that the values we seek to extend are reflected in the education and training, particularly young children receive in these countries. And I can assure you we're working very closely on this very objective with DFID colleagues.